So we're going to look at the linear and angular representations of force, acceleration, and momentum. And we're going to see that they are not the same. When we say force is equal to mass times acceleration, of course what we mean is the vector sum of the force is equal to mass times the vector acceleration. And so I mean that for this as well, and the same for torque. However, I'm going to leave these out to simplify the math. And so we know the equation torque is equal to I times alpha, meaning if we put a torque on something, it's going to angularly accelerate, meaning its omega is going to increase or decrease. However, the big difference with this is that you can't change your mass, but you can change your moment of inertia by changing your body shape or moving masses around inside of an object. And this has profound effects because this equation says Newton's first law. If there is no force acting on a body, it moves along, like in space, at a constant velocity. And it would follow, if this equation is true, that if there is no torque on a system, like in space, or like on a frictionless surface of ice, that there would be no angular acceleration, that things would spin at the exact same rate. But we see that is just not true, like when the skater switches from a large moment of inertia to a small moment of inertia, her omega, her spinning rate, changes incredibly. And so we see this equation just isn't right. It's really best to just keep angular momentum is equal to I times omega. And the rate of change of L is equal to the sum of the torques. So if torque is equal to zero on a system, then the change in momentum must be zero. And therefore, if I increases, then omega must decrease. And if I decreases, omega must increase. If you're interested in the math, you can see this. Because momentum is mass times velocity. Using the chain rule, I have two terms, but the rate of change of mass is zero. And so this term drops, and dv dt is equal to acceleration. So these two equations are identical. However, with torque, this term doesn't drop. I substitute in I omega for angular momentum. And again, we see that these two expressions would be identical if this term vanished too. But if your body is not solid, if it can change its moment of inertia, then this term has to remain. And so what we can see with the ballerina, as she pulls her arms in, this term is negative because her moment of inertia is getting smaller. And so if this term is negative, this term is positive, or you have positive angular acceleration, and your omega is increasing. So in summary, while force is equal to mass times acceleration is correct, as well as force is a rate of change of momentum, we can't say the same for torque. Where this is the equation we like to use because it's simpler, we can only use it for a solid body that can't change its moment of inertia. And that, in fact, it's better to say that torque, rather than I alpha, torque is the rate of change of angular momentum of a body.